So it appears as though it's happened now. The CEO of Xpeng has been fired. This is why, and this is who will replace him. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the channel. I'm Electric Viking, great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers and welcome back everyone else. In 2020, Great Wall Motors, yes, I know, not Xpeng, Great Wall Motors, delivered 1.1 million cars. In 2021, it was more than 1.2 million. In 2022, as in the year just gone, sales were not as impressive. They've shrunk down to 1 million. Great Wall Motors hopes they can increase their sales in the year of 2023 from 1 million to 1.6 million. Is it possible? Well, I guess it's possible. Is it likely? No, I believe they lost some of their market share to BYD in particular. That said, they do own the car brand, the electric car brand called Aura. Aura are bringing EVs all around the world over the next year or two. They're bringing the Funky Cat. They're bringing a series of different models. Funky Cat, by the way, has got some good reviews in Europe. And it has the third highest Euro NCAP score of any car tested in 2022. It ranks higher than BMW's EVs that they've tested. Third, third best period for the entire year. First and second, of course, went to Tesla models, but the Aura Good Cat and the Funky Cat did incredibly well. So what's gonna happen? Well, the CEO of Xpeng was fired and they're replacing the CEO with the CEO, or at least soon to be the former CEO of Great Wall Motors. So where was the CEO, He Jinping, was he actually technically fired? Well, no, but I mean, he had to leave. Basically, the company has massively underperformed. A lot of disappointment in China, actually, around Xpeng. No one really understands what's going on. And for some reason, even though the prices of their vehicles are quite good, people just don't seem to want them. Now, Xpeng's monthly deliveries, January, slow time of year, right? 13,000, January of 2022. That's a really good number. And everyone's thinking, okay, this is going to be great. I was thinking that. Everyone was thinking that. Xpeng said they were going to deliver 300,000 EVs in 2022. And I thought, you know what? Maybe they can eke out a profit in the fourth quarter based on what I'm hearing and seeing. And then, of course, February was a bad month. It's a bad month for everyone. So no one really thought too much of that. 6,000 EVs delivered in February. March, great month. All-time high. 15,414 vehicles delivered in that month. Then you're thinking, okay, things are going to ramp up from here. But they didn't. Unfortunately, Xpeng stock price has pretty much collapsed as a result of what has happened since then. And you can pretty clearly see a direct correlation with the company's actual performance and their share price. For example, November the 1st, 2020, stock price, $58.76. Fast forward to April the 1st, 2021, stock price now hits 30 US dollars, jumps back up to 55 US dollars on the 1st of November, 2021. But since then, it's gradually declined sometimes not gradually, sometimes very quickly, in fact, to today, where the stock price is only 10 US dollars, it's worth a fraction of what it used to be. A lot of people are extremely disappointed. They're not only disappointed about the stock price, they're disappointed about the performance of the company. If we just go over those numbers again, for the year delivered, 121,000 electric cars, most of those in China, some of them actually were delivered in Europe, and that's an increase of 23% versus 2021. So you'd be thinking, well, that is pretty good, right? An increase of 21%. Well, sort of. The thing is, the trajectory lately has been down. Demand has been down. They've actually reduced prices. Demand still hasn't worked out and kicked up back yet because they don't really have any more levers to pull. Now, Xpeng's fourth quarter guidance for deliveries was 20,000. They delivered 22,300, but that was a decline of 47% from the 41,750 units that they delivered in the same period last year, right? Yeah, fourth quarter last year versus fourth quarter this year, terrible. They delivered nearly twice as many cars over those three months at the end of last year as they what they did this year. And that would appear to me as though the company is kind of flaming out for some reason. The Chinese don't see a lot in it. I do, personally, I think they make great cars. I did a, a 
video about the Xpeng P5, which I believe would be a huge game changer for the company. It's incredibly well priced. Specifications are amazing. And uh, it just didn't go that way. I don't know why. No one seems to really understand why there isn't the demand for Xpeng that we all used to see and that we thought would continue. Now, what makes things even worse and what makes the potential for the stock to go even further is the fact that Xpeng is probably the most sensitive to Tesla's recent price reductions than any other manufacturer. For example, BYD still has long queues in terms of pre-orders, obviously. Then you've got NEO. They sell more of a higher priced, more premium type vehicle. That's the perception of the public anyway. And so realistically, people are going to say, well, why would we buy an Xpeng? Well, that's what they're saying right now. When? Instead, we can just get a Tesla Model 3 for a couple of thousand dollars more, better specifications. In some ways it does, in some ways it doesn't, depending on what you value. So should you get an Xpeng P5 or should you get a Model 3? Well, there's not gonna be any P5s available in most countries around the world, so it's pretty obvious that that question is no, because you don't have much choice. You don't really have that option in most places around the world this year. You probably will next year, but not this year. And that's assuming they're still in business because they've been hemorrhaging money. I mean, billions of dollars every year. They've never actually made a profit. Now, apparently, Xpeng staff in their stores have said that customers have come back, canceled their orders in order to buy a Tesla Model 3 or a Tesla Model Y. Can't say that's true or not, but that's coming from Chinese media. Doesn't seem like Chinese media would be um, all that keen on making up a pro Tesla story. They prefer the negative Tesla stories like most of the media worldwide, unfortunately. What's happened is the Chinese government have basically pulled a few strings, um, probably provided some funding for Xpeng that we don't know about. And they've said, we're going to appoint our CEO, our lady, who was the CEO of Great Wall Motors. See if she can fix this mess. That's what's happening. Senior Post says, Xpeng has been making a series of organizational changes and the latest information indicates that the moves appear to be more radical than thought. Wang Fenying, formerly president of Great Wall Motors, will replace the current CEO, who is currently the chairman and CEO of Expo. So there it is. He's being forced out. Maybe investors, maybe the government saying, you know what, we don't want you to fail. We've put enough money into you. This is ridiculous. Get your act together. You can't get your act together. We gave you six months. We gave you three months, however long it was. We're putting our person in now to take charge and clean up this mess. That's what that's what they might be saying. Now, I'm not saying that's the case for Expo. I'm not saying it is a mess. I mean, things are not going as well as they expected, considering they considered they expected to deliver 200,000 vehicles for the year. They got nowhere near that. They got less than half that number. So that's quite disappointing. So hopefully 2023 will be a much better year for Xpeng. Hopefully they'll rebound. The new CEO maybe will breathe some life into them. Hopefully there won't be too many politics, that kind of thing coming in with uh, a new CEO. One of the challenges with Xpeng, like other Chinese car companies, is so many choices, so many models, so many variants, so many options. It just confuses customers. Tesla's strategy of having a small number of models with a small number of options makes it much easier to just go through and click buy. I think that's a strategy they could adopt. In fact, apparently they've already started doing that on their website. Fingers crossed for them because I do like Xpeng. They're not some impressive stuff with their flying drones, their flying cars. They're all kinds of their, actually their, their automation technology is extremely impressive. Maybe BYD can steal some of that. Yeah. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Let me know how you think Xpeng will go in 2023. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.